Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So yeah, so basically we are going to start. You have not written this, right? We have not started anything. We just discussed the syllabus. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay. Right, ma'am. Okay. So basically, we'll be starting with money and banking unit, right? So uh, this is a, this money and banking. This is one unit. Okay, but I have divided this unit into two chapter. One is money, and other one is banking. Okay, so I have divided this in two chapters, like money and banking. So we will be covering money chapter first, and after that banking chapter. Okay, and once we are done with two chapter, it will be like we are done with the one unit. Clear? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. So now, uh, money and banking. So basically, this is unit money and banking, and the chapter is money. Okay, so first you are going to write this, right? I'll just explain you what you are going to write. So, money and banking. This is the unit, but you will write chapter money and over money. What we are going to study, right? Like we are following in eleventh class, whatever we are completing, we are marking it, right? So similarly, also here we will be doing the same. Okay, so first we will be doing money, uh, meaning and its function. Like what is money? What are the functions of money? All day. Then we'll do supply of money. What do you understand by supply of money? So basically, supply of money uh, has lots of components like currency held by public and then demand deposit held by commercial bank. So right now, these are the terms which are like quite confusing, or you can say which are like, oh my god, ma'am, what is this commercial bank? What is demand deposit? Right? Don't worry. But when we'll do the chapter, you will be familiar of this. You know, when we were doing things in eleventh class. Things were like, oh my God, what is PPC? You know, what is this? What is that? But now, I hope you are getting everything. Right? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Similarly, with twelfth class also, once we'll be completing things, it will be like you won't that these words won't be scaring you anymore. Right? And after this, we'll be doing money creation by the commercial banking system. So, money creation is that portion. In some books, it is under money chapter, and in some books, it is under banking chapter. Okay. So, but we'll be covering this in money chapter itself. So now, what you are going to write? We are you are going to write unit, money and banking, and then chapter one, which is just don't write one two, just write chapter money. Like this is what we are going to do in chapter chapter money and this entire portion. Just write it down. When we will be doing the banking chapter, then we'll write this portion. Okay, because this is part of banking chapter. Okay. Am I audible, Jana? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You can write it down. Okay, ma'am. Done, ma'am. Okay, great. So now let's just start. Okay. So first thing is, uh, Jaina, just tell me what is the difference between meaning and the definition. Do you understand? What do you understand by meaning and what do you understand by a definition? Are there this? Ah, uh, like are these two the same thing or is there any difference? 
just your thought what is meaning and what is definition any rough idea anything just don't feel like oh my god what ma'am definition i know but meaning maybe they are same okay just tell me tell you what do you understand by like what do you understand by definition definition like define it i don't know how to explain it but i know definition and meaning is like yeah so sorry yes meaning it's like same only yeah okay yeah somewhere it is same but somewhere it is like a margin is there okay so i'll just tell you okay for example uh, just give me one minute ha huh? okay so basically for example if this is a picture okay if i'll ask you that janat tell me what is this what is this you'll say ma'am this is a fruit right if i'll ask your friend what is this he will also say that ma'am this is a fruit okay if i'll ask my sister or anyone else in my family they'll be saying ma'am this is a fruit clear yes ma'am for example if i'll ask you to define it what like what do you uh, like just define it so maybe you will defining it like this ma'am this is a red color fruit okay red color fruit okay or your friend will be saying ma'am this is sweet fruit okay somebody else will be saying ma'am this is red and or yellow color fruit right so basically meaning this is meaning okay meaning is like meaning remains same right you cannot change meaning but definition you can change it is according to for people person to person why person to person maybe i am defining this uh, this fruit like as a sweet fruit you are defining it as a, uh, a red color fruit your friend is defining it as a red and yellow color fruit so definition is basically how people are defining it okay so meaning will always remain same right but definition changes so meaning always remain same that for example if this is a pen so it will always remain a writing instrument Okay, you cannot say that this is you. This is a cooking instrument. No, this is a writing instrument, and it will be used for writing only. Right? You cannot use this pen for cooking. Right? Similarly, so meaning remain always same. It is in general. Everyone, if I say what is this, everyone will say uh, writing instrument, writing instrument. No one will say this is a shoes or this is cooking instrument or this is a you know eating instrument, uh, eating thing. No, right? But definition it differs to people. For example, according to Jaina, this is a red color fruit. Okay, according to Jainab, an apple is a red color fruit. According to Jainab's friend, this is a sweet fruit. According to Sana, this is red and yellow color fruit. Okay, so when there is like I am mentioning the name, according to this person, this is the. So that is definition. But in general, if I say what is this? This is a fruit. So this is a meaning. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so meaning and definition, meaning always remain same, but definition differ according to person. It is like according if you are defining it, if someone else is defining it, meaning can well uh, meaning will always remain same, but coming to definition, it will change according to person, right? According how they are defining it, that is a definition. Clear? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. So now similarly the same things with meaning, ah, uh, money. So me, ah, uh, we have meaning of money plus the definition. Okay, so first we will do meaning. So if I ask you what is money or define money, anything if I ask you, okay, if I ask define you money, then you have to give the definition, okay. But if I ask you what do you understand by money, what is money, ah, uh, write something about money. So you have to use these things, okay. Now for example, I say, Jainab, introduce yourself. Who is Jainab? For example, I say, who is Jainab? So you'll be saying Jainab is a girl. Jainab studies in twelfth class. She has economics as a subject. She studies in this school. All this thing you need to mention, but in, in case uh, if I asked you who is Jenab, you said, "Ah, uh, Jenab studies in twelfth class. She has exams." I cannot judge you. You know whether you are a girl, whether you are a boy, in which school you are studying. That was proper inform. That was incomplete information, right? So similarly, when people will ask you, when examiner will ask you, what is money? You need to mention four things. Okay, you have to mention 
there is no option you have to mention all this point okay so ma'am what is money so money is anything which is see you cannot say money is something like that for example there was an apple so apple is a fruit but money you cannot say anything so that's why money is anything what is money money is anything okay so money is anything which is generally accepted as first medium of exchange second measure of value third store of value fourth standard of deferred payment okay these are the four point to which you need to mention if you miss out anything if for example you didn't mention this four point then it is a incomplete meaning of money okay so ma'am what is money ma'am money is anything which is generally accepted as just learn this first line and then the four points medium of exchange measure of value store of value standard of deferred payment right now you must be wondering ma'am what is medium of exchange what is measure of value what is this what is that don't worry we will do everything in detail what how you are going to learn medium of exchange how you are going to learn measure of value what is store of value we'll do but you right now just remember these lines remember these terms like medium of exchange measure of value store of value standard of deferred payment m m s s so 2m and 2s so these are this is the meanings so you have to include all this point in case if you miss anything then there will be a mark sorry mark mark deduction is it clear yes ma'am so what you will write you will write meaning of money and after that this meaning is money is anything which is generally accepted as medium of exchange measure of value store of value standard of deferred payment okay so do, uh, don't write it down right now i'll just tell you when to write okay now that was the meaning right but now we'll come to definition as well so what is definition okay so definition will always like according to this person according to that person right so basically we have two scholars or two economists you can say one is robertson and other one is kent so according to robertson according to him money is anything which is widely widely means all over the world okay so money is anything which is widely accepted in payment for goods see if you want to make payment for anything you need money right until and unless you don't have money you cannot make payment right so he said that money is anything which is widely widely means all over the world it's not about india it's not about australia it's not about ua it's not about dubai it's about the worldwide worldwide means widely accepted in payment for goods so money is something if you want to make payment i will only accept money okay so accepted in payment for goods or in discharge of other kind of business obligation so business obligation is basically for example you want to do any business right there also you need to purchase something and you need to sell something so you need money in case if you don't have money how will you you know maintain a business there will be lots of problem so if you want to remove all those obligations then you need money so money is anything which is widely accepted first in payment for good or in discharge of all kind of business obligation so if you want to remove all kind of business obligation and you want to do smooth business then you only need money right so this was according to robertson clear yes ma'am okay now other one was kent other scholar was kent so according to kent money is anything which is commonly used he was very clever you know from the meaning itself he took the words and made his own definition right so you'll just get to know money is anything which is commonly used and generally accepted as see we did this medium of exchange in the meaning part plus standard of value we did right so he was very clever he took out of four he took two words and he made his own definition right so he said a money is anything which is commonly used and generally accepted as medium of exchange or as a standard of value clear yes ma'am okay so basically you have two definition but you are going to write only one if you feel like your robertson definition is good you are you are going to write robertson definition but if you feel like ken definition is easy and you can remember it for longer period of time because our main motive is to learn and to remember it for longer period of time it's not about mugging it's about understanding so if you feel like robertson is good write it down if you feel like kent is good write it down you can write any one definition okay okay so first what you will write you will write meaning of money okay first you will okay, write of money and then this like just write in point 1 2 3 4 like this and once you are done then you will do the definition of money there you will do either kent or robertson okay okay ma'am
then ma'am now i have to write definition of money yes okay ma'am Shall I have done? Are you writing the entire thing? Yeah, ma'am. This first one, second one, and ah, uh, 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 no, I you just have to. <laughs> okay, okay. You just have to write this, the Kent one. If you are like, as I told you, that whether you can write uh, one of the definition, either this or this. If you have written, that's fine. But uh, yeah, yeah. When yeah, I'm done now. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. So okay. basically, if I'll ask you what is the definition, you're going to either tell me according to Robertson or according to Ken. It's your choice. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, great. So now, basically, we are going to do functions of main, money. Okay. So over here, you can see that I've written two uh, functions with blue color and two with purple. Why so, ma'am? Why you have written like this? So basically, there is a reason behind that. Okay. So first is these two, uh, like now coming to functions of money. See, whatever, for example, uh, I ask you, who is Janab? So you said Janab is a girl who studies in 12th class. She has economics. If I'll, uh, if I'll ask what uh, Janab do, so you'll be saying, ma'am, she's a student. She studies economics. Okay. So similarly, if I'll ask you, what are the functions of money? You're going to explain the characteristics itself, right? Whatever the characteristics of money are, you're going to explain it. So similarly, if I'll ask you, what are the functions of money? You're going to say, ma'am, there are two functions of money. One primary function and other secondary function. Okay. So under primary function, you have medium of exchange and measure of value. And under secondary function, you have store of value and standard of deferred payment. Okay. So if I'll ask you, Jainab, just tell me, uh, what do you understand by functions of money? So you'll say, ma'am, there are two functions of money. First is medium of exchange and second is measure of, uh, sorry, primary function and secondary function. Under primary function, you have medium of exchange and measure of value, which is M and M. Okay. And under secondary function, you have store of value and standard of deferred payment. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So first you'll write, you'll write functions of money. Just draw this table or the chart. Okay. Then we'll okay. start with primary function. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Done, ma'am. Okay. So now first, Jenna will be telling me, I'm just giving you one minute. Of course, you will be using your notes. First, you will tell me the meaning of money, like by using your notes, and then you will tell me the functions of money. Okay? Just revise it. Okay. And yeah, you can use your note. Just uh, why I'm doing this, because that will boost up your confidence. Okay? Okay, ma'am. And let me know once you're done. Okay.
done ma'am okay so janab tell me what do you understand by mean uh, like what is the meaning of money meaning of money is which is generally accepted as first measure of value second first measure of value second medium of exchange third third store of value and fourth standard of deferred payment very good okay now what are the functions of uh, like money money is anything which is commonly used uh, commonly used and generally generally accepted as a um, medium what are the what are the functions of money as a medium of Functions, functions, ma'am. There are two oh. functions of money. Oh, there are two functions of money: primary function and secondary. In primary, there is measure of value and medium of exchange, and in secondary function, it is um store of value and standards as standard as deferred payment. Yes, very good, very good, Jan. Jan, good. Yes. So basically, now you know the primary function and the secondary function. But now we'll be doing this in detail. Okay. Now, ma'am, how an exam hall? I'll get the question. Okay. So basically, either they'll be asking you what are the functions of money, or they'll be asking you what are the primary functions of money or secondary, right? Or they will be asking why money is known. Ah, uh, like why why money is known as measure of value. Okay, so you have to explain them why money is known as, or what, or they'll be asking you explain the function medium of exchange, right? Like this. So you have to prepare your answer in a very good way so that whatever examiner will be asking, they can ask you anything. So you should be ready with your answer. Is it fine? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Now we'll start with primary function. So, ma'am, what are what are primary function? So, first medium of exchange, like this is the first function, right? So, ma'am, what uh, like how you're going to remember it? Medium of exchange. See, this is the most basic functions of money. There are four functions of money: two primary, two secondary. But medium of exchange is the most basic function. Basic function means the very most important and the first function. Okay. Uh, so, this is the most basic function of money. Why? As today, all exchanges takes place in the now, ma'am. Why you have written as today, right? Because according to us, like every like from we like when whenever we were born, we can see that we were using money. But why you have mentioned as today? So I'll tell you that today we are using money, but earlier there was a barter system. Okay, there was a barter system. So barter system earlier there was no money, no coins, no rupees, no notes, nothing. Okay, there was a barter system. So, ma'am, what is barter system? So, for example, if this is a person, and this is person two, okay, he is selling coconuts, okay, and he is selling mangoes, okay. If this person needs mango, he'll come to this person and he'll say, "I want one kg mango. Ah, uh, can you please give me one kg mango?" So he says, "Okay, I also want one kg coconut." So what they will do? They will exchange their product. I'll give you one kg coconut, and in return, you will give me one kg mango. Okay, so in the barter system, basically, today what happened? If you are giving money, you will be getting the product. You will getting the. For example, you want coconut, you will be giving money. You will be getting coconut. If you want strawberry, you will be giving money. You will be getting strawberry. But earlier, goods in place of goods. If you have the good, then you will be getting the good. If you have coconuts, you can purchase ah uh, mangoes. If you have, but there was a problem. For example, if this is person one. This is person two. This is person three, and this is person four. He is selling coconut. He is selling mangoes, and he is selling pineapple. Okay, and this person he has, for example, banana. Okay, this person need coconut. He went to this person that I want coconut. Can you please give me the coconut? So he said, No, no, no. I cannot give it to you because I don't want banana in return. So he rejected, though he has coconut, right? But still he rejected. Why? Because he don't want banana. So double coincidence. Double coincidence means like whatever I want, you need whatever I'm selling, you need to buy it, and whatever you are selling, I need to buy it. Like there is a need. Only then we will be you know getting into a contract that okay I'm giving you this in a return you are giving me that. Okay. So this was the problem that you have to find the particular person who is ready to give you his product in return of whatever you are offering. Okay, so that was a problem. But in today's time, if you have money, you can purchase anything, whether coconut, pineapple, banana, from any shop anywhere. 
right but earlier you have to find a particular person a particular uh, uh, people person who is ready to give his product in return of yours clear yes ma'am yeah so that was a barter system that's why i have written as today because earlier there was a barter system so in exchange of goods goods were taking goods were getting right but now it as today all the exchanges takes place in terms of money whatever you want whatever you need you need money that okay and money helps in buying and selling of goods and services say if you want to buy something you need money right so goods is basically the product for example pen mobile phone uh, you know clothes anything but what about services services are basically for example you were not well you went to doctor he treated you right so he gave you the treatment so that treatment is basically the service similarly your uh, taps and taps were not working you called plumber he uh, you know repaired your taps he gave his service right so if you want to buy some services you have to pay but in order if you want to sell for example sorry for example i want to sell my mobile phone that also i need a person who is going to give me money in exchange of my mobile phone okay yeah? yes sir the so medium of exchange is basically first thing this is the most basic function of money as today all the exchanges takes place in terms of money money helps in buying and selling of goods and services done right okay, three points done yes now second measure of value so ma'am what is measure of value so measure is basically you are going to measure it how much how much how much okay so for example this is a ring okay and this is ring 2 okay this is a diamond ring and this is you can say silver ring you know diamond is more expensive as compared to silver right so if i'll show you both the rings if i'll ask you jena which ring is more valuable or more expensive which one ring will be diamond diamond why how come you know that because you check the price right that ma'am this is for 500 rupees but this is for 50 rupees so of course 500 rupees is more than 50 rupees right so you said yeah. ma'am diamond one is very much valuable how come you measure the value because of the price and price how come there was a there was written the cost the money right so money yeah. measures yeah so money measures value of goods and services and helps in sale and purchase of goods and services this is a simple line that money measures value of goods and services and once you measure the value that will helping you in sale and purchase of goods and services that's it over but now from here onwards you'll get a story now ma'am what is that story for example this is a mall okay and this is a this is one dress over there you went to mall there was a sales person you this is you you went to mall and you really love this dress okay you ask the person what is the value of this uh, dress okay you ask for value that what is the value he told you ma'am this is for 500 rupees so basically he told you the price okay and you said okay okay i really like this dress i'll be purchasing it then you went to billing counter and there you paid money right so value is always expressed in terms of price and price is always expressed in terms of money so money. from yeah this is a story you have to remember you went to uh, the mall there you asked what is the value of this product he said he told you the price that ma'am this is for 500 rupees and you were said okay and then when you went for billing there you paid money so value then price then money clear yes ma'am okay so now the value of each goods and services is expressed as its price or you can say is expressed in terms of price okay as it or in terms of in terms of price and the price of all goods and services are expressed in terms of money so value of goods and services is expressed in terms of price and price of all goods and services is expressed in terms of money clear yes ma'am okay so basically this is the measure of value that money measures value of goods and services and helps in sale and purchase of goods and services after that you have to write the story that value of each goods and services is expressed in terms of uh, price and price of all goods and services is expressed in terms of money clear yes ma'am okay so now you are going to write primary function first write medium of exchange once you are done i'll just scroll it down okay okay ma'am
मैम प्लीज स्क्रोल इट डाउन डन मैम ओके सो नाउ वी विल डू द सेकेंडरी फंक्शन ओके सो मैम व्हाट आर सेकेंडरी फंक्शन ओके मैम या सो सेकेंडरी फंक्शन इज फर्स्ट इज स्टोर ऑफ वैल्यू राइट सो स्टोर ऑफ वैल्यू व्हेन एवर नाउ मेन थिंग इज दैट यू हैव टू लर्न फ्यू थिंग्स राइट सो मैम व्हाट इज स्टोर ऑफ वैल्यू सी इफ यू विल स्टोर योर वेल मनी राइट वन डे यू विल हैव लॉट्स ऑफ वेल ओके स्टोरिंग मींस For example, if I'll say this is a wealthy person, right? Mm -hmm. So how can I say this is a wealthy person? Tell me. Bye. Bye. Like why I'm saying this is a wealthy person? What he has? Because because he hmm. has money. Yes. Maybe because he has off. lots of money. Yeah. For example, yeah, I have I have lots of pen. You won't be saying I'm wealthy because I don't have money, right? Pen, car, no matter what. But if you have lots of money, then I can consider that you are wealthy, right? So similarly, store means store means if you store, one day you will be wealthy, right? So from here only you will just start store. Whenever you are going to write it, you are just remember store of value. Store means if I store, I'll be wealthy. So you have to start from wealth. Okay. So wealth can be conveniently stored in form of money. See, if you want to store your wealth. right wealth is always stored in terms of or in form of money only right but you are not going to store it in form of pens copies mobile phone no you are going to store your wealth in terms of or in form of money only so wealth can be conveniently stored in form of money money can be stored without the loss in value see for example earlier there was a barter system you cannot store your product right because after one time they will expire or they will be rotten they will be stale right but for example money can be stored without the loss for example you purchase this mobile phone this is for 500 rupees today after 5 years you said that okay i bought it for 500 rupees you placed it in your room and after 5 years when you wanted to sell it the value of your mobile phone was 200 rupees right the value got you there was a loss in value why because at that time it was latest but after 5 years there will be more latest mobile phone in the market right so the value of your mobile phone will be less but similarly if you store 500 rupees only 500 rupees note even after 5 year the value of 500 rupees note will be 500 rupees only right so money you can store money without loss in value there is no loss in value if you store 1000 rupees note today after 10 years 20 year 30 years the value of 10000 rupees or 1000 rupees note will be same right i won't be saying that jenab this is 5 years all note that i won't be accepting now i'll be considering this 500 rupees note as 10 rupees note no i won't be saying that right
Yes, no? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. And savings are secure. See, if you are storing money, that means you are saving it. Right? So, savings are always secure and can be used whenever there is a need. For example, uh, January, February and March. April, you have your birthday. Right? So, gen from January, it's in, you were saving 10, 10 rupees. Okay? April, April, it's your birthday. So, basically, you were saving it. Right? And in April month, you need it. So, whatever you said that, okay, I'll be using my savings. So, you took 30 rupees from your savings. So, savings are secured and can be used whenever there's a need. Whenever you want it, you can use your savings. Okay? So, now how you're going to remember it? First, you're going to say, ma'am, a store of value. Okay, I mean, if I'll store money, I'll be wealthy. So, wealth can be conveniently stored in form of money. And second, if I store my money, then there will be a loss in value. No. Money can be stored without loss in value. And next, if you are storing it, that means you are saving. And you have the doubt that, okay, I'm saving my money, but can I use it whenever I need it? Yes, saving are secured and can be used whenever there is a need. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so quickly write it down. Secondary function, first store of value. Okay, ma'am. Done, ma'am. Okay, now a standard of deferred payment. Okay, just a minute. Huh? Okay, ma'am. Okay. So, standard of deferred payment. Okay. So, ma'am, first thing is that, ma'am, what is deferred payment? This is a very new term. Can you please explain it? What is deferred payment? You have heard this word payment, right? For example, you bought new dress, you will be doing the payment, right? But, ma'am, what is deferred payment? I have never heard about it. Okay. So, deferred payment refers to payment made in future, right? For example, you went to a mall, right? You uh, bought a new dress. This was a mall, you bought the new dress. Okay, so you made payment that 500 rupees. Okay, so that is the payment. But for example, you bought the dress today, but you will be making the payment tomorrow or maybe next month, next week, or next year, whenever it is, then that the payment will be known as deferred payment. F is for future. Okay, so deferred payment refers to payment made in future. Okay, so see, earlier there was a barter system. So you cannot say like this that, okay, please give me one kg coconut and next year I'll be giving you uh, one kg banana. No, that was not accepted. But with money, for example, I went to a shop, I bought a mobile phone, right? And this mobile phone was for 500 rupees, but I had only 200 rupees with me. So I said that, okay, 200 rupees, I am making payment today, but rest of the 300 rupees, I'll be paying every month. For next month, I'll be paying 100, and after that, I'll be paying 100, and after that, I'll be paying 100. Okay, like this, I'll be paying you. 
right? So this is what I am taking the product today, but I am making the payment in future. Future can be day after tomorrow, tomorrow, one hour after. It can be like, uh, like apart from present, whenever it is, right? So money, because of money, money makes possible the credit transaction. Now, do you know what is credit card? Yes, ma'am. Uh, why credit card is used? Just tell me the benefit of credit card. Because um, the payment will be done before the yeah before we purchase it. Yeah, credit card is That's basically product. yeah. So credit card is basically, for example, you went to shopping and you had only two hundred rupees, but when the bill came, that was for three hundred rupees, right? So when you will use your credit card. You can pay the three amount, three hundred rupees from your credit card. Like that, credit card is giving you short term loan. Okay, that okay. For example, you had two hundred rupees in your bank account, and uh, the bill was three hundred rupees. So you will be using your credit card over there, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever your salary will be credited in your account, that hundred rupees uh, credit card will be deducted. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so that is credit. Credit is basically giving a short term loan or something like that. So because of money, it is possible, right? If there is no money, then credit transaction won't be possible. So money makes possible the credit transaction to happen. Sorry, why this happening? Why it is why you are making credit transition? Credit transition are only done or only happen when payments are not able to be made immediately or when instant payment are not made. You can write when payments are not able to be made immediately. Or you can write till when you have to write. Okay, same. And after that, either you can write payment are not able to be made immediately, or you can write when instant payment are not made. When you are not paying instantly, you are taking the product right now, but you are not doing the instant payment or the immediate payment. You are doing the payment in future or maybe after some time. So that is known as deferred payment. So first, what is deferred payment, ma'am? Deferred payment refers to payment made in future, and money makes it possible the credit transaction to happen. Why credit transaction you are doing when instant payment are not done, or you can say when payments are not to be made immediately. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you can write check in this. And write. Okay.
Jenim done? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, please can you show me the first point, store of value? Okay, this yes, you have not written it? No, I was just checking the last point, savings. Okay. Savings are secure and can be used whenever there is a need. 